please give it up for the nobodies. Oh my God, that oh. took forever. Oy. I had a birthday waiting for that. Oh my God. You guys, we just spent, I think, nine hours or seven lifetimes or something watching wrestling. Hi, I'm Ariel Italic. I'm Lady Barricka Andrews. And I'm James Mansfield. Yeah! Yeah! I'm the reject Halloween kid from Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah! Actually, Where can I get a redo? I'm Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, we're the nobodies and you're watching Nobody's Watching Wrestling! Oh <laughs> Where am I looking at? Are we looking directly at this camera? Oh, that's the camera. That's cool. the camera, and that's you yours. Cool. Hey. We've done this before. You know what it's like. <laughs> We've lost our minds because it's just been this a day and a half and a night and a quarter. We're loopy, <laughs> but... <laughs> Moses wandered the desert for 40 days and nights, and we wandered WrestleMania for 8,000 years. We're going to start off with Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins versus The Miz. Just the three best asses in the WWE going oh at it. Oh, my God, so much ass. Ass, 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 ass. Oh, yeah, Finn the Booty Balor. <laughs> That's what we call him. Yeah. The troops. <laughs> like Trinity the Tuck Taylor. Um... Uh, Finn's entrance with the full oh rainbow regalia, like, God. changed my life. The, the freaking Adam Rippin of the WWE. <laughs> yes, bitch! You, I want her to wear a harness. Oh, my God. Oh yeah, my God. If Finn a came out in a harness, I would, my pop would tuck and my jizz would jizz. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, though, there's something a little exploitative about it being like, he's walking to the ring with real live gay people because later they use little people in the same way in oh. pancake costumes. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm feeling pandered to, but also like, I'll take it. Also, we have no verification that those are real gay people. They're just real rainbow people. Maybe they just play gay people on TV. But you can tell he has his heart in the right place. He's not like Nick Jonas with his gay baiting. Yes, truth. Oh, so yes. truth. Whoa. Mm. I can also tell he has his dick in the right place because his shorts are real tight. Yep. Hi, Finn. Should we talk about their outfits? Miz's outfit, for instance. Oh God. Yeah, he's like the dragonborn now. <laughs> he was the worst of the night. He was the worst, worst of, of the, the night. Worst of the night, he was. In his like Naruto ass there. headband. <laughs> oh, I had nothing to say. Oh. It's the Miz. I'm, I skipped over her. <laughs> <laughs> she, looked, she looked like a Lannister. Uh, I moved on. Oh, cool. <laughs> There was a definite LARPer vibe about the Miz's situation. Seth was a little LARPy, too, in his armor, his blue pants and armor. Nobody told Finn that it was Game of Thrones they're all referencing. Because, like, Seth had the full-on, like, White Walker with the Lannister. And then we had, what do you call that? Like, I just came out in high school, so I'm going to wear every rainbow band I can get from Spencer's Gift and Hot <laughs> Topic. <laughs> well, Seth had oh the beautiful God. blue eyes because uh, the spice must flow. He took them out. I didn't see him take the contact. No, out. he took the contact lenses out at some point. Why? But I didn't see. I didn't see him do it. It was a good little sleight of hand. If Kennedy can be all flipping around drag races stage with the blue contacts in, level your pussy up. We should talk about the wrestling, though. I don't know why, because I remember literally none of the Nothing. match. Nothing. Crotches and face was the whole match. <laughs> All I remember is the match started with them all very quickly trying to pin each other, and I was like, this is dope, and now the rest of the match is lost in the sands of time. Do we remember who won? Uh, oh, Seth, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I'm fine. I'm comfortable. Oh. Report, you're a fan of this. Um, what was the whole deal with Miz and Bo Dallas? He, like, sent him away like a puppy. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was supposed to be like a I can do this on my own kind of a thing. Like, oh, like I don't need my, my minions to win. But turns out he does. Asuka versus yes. Charlotte. Guys, uh, guys. Oh, yeah. this match was actually good. It was so good. <laughs> I don't spoil anything, but it kind of seems like Vince's F you from the Rumble and the results from that. Yeah. Oh, shit. Thing. I guess we should talk about how they both looked amazing. Amazing. So... A fun detail, th so WWE loves to do this thing where they do the top braid, but it makes everyone's head look real flat, and someone figured out how to braid Charlotte's hair on the top and still give it extra super volume so she didn't look like a pinhead from the circus, and I was really <laughs> appreciative of that. And you didn't see the tracks from her weave either. That was a new thing for her. <laughs> They've been letting her go short on IG, but they did not let her do that tonight. Short hair? 
Like, no, how they short? just brush it to the side. It looks short, but there's it's all still there. Oh, it's she was serving in. face tonight too. <laughs> the manservants. There were manservants. Oh, there oh my were manservants. <laughs> this bar went wild for her entrance, screaming from just all the rigmarole. Speaking of Game of Thrones, it was a full Cersei Lannister moment. I only know that reference from watching All Stars Three. I've never actually seen an episode of Game of Thrones, but. Charlotte was as close to a drag queen being an evil overlord as I can imagine, so I guess that's what that must be like. Put that thing close to my face again. <laughs> Do you like two of them? Oh, oh gosh. I'm getting from both sides now. Okay. <laughs> Not in the Joni Mitchell way either. Um, Ooh, so oh. <laughs> Well, someone got it. Asuka did not look different than usual. Uh, she looked great, but it was not as much of a level up. Oh, she did have a bunch of sparkle on her mask, She though. was, like, glittered up. But mostly what I will say is that this was an amazing, amazing match, and I was invested 100% of the time. You didn't talk about Charlotte's throw pillow, like, bikini top. She had, like, the full-on, like, you know, you can change the color, the mermaid seat. Oh, she should have. Even I enjoyed uh, Charlotte's outfit tonight. I was surprised. Yeah, you actually liked her. I'm surprised. She was dipped in gold. I didn't say I liked her. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Jumped to conclusions. My s I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, she looked like Asuka. So there's that. Asuka looked like Asuka? Yeah. I mean, sh when you're badass, you don't need to change it's anything. It's like the same old, like, Paul. Ew. No. No. It's the same party store wig and, like, that cosplay wig you get for $12 on Amazon. Oh. 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 You know one, Berica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right here, bitch. Oh, shit. James is going to lose some followers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> is James Mansfield ready for Asuka? Because I think maybe. I don't know. I, I'm i not going to find out because I have to block you after this. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry. But, like, gee, though, I will say, us, we've been talking about how Asuka doesn't need to change anything, but she does need to change something because she fucking lost! Uh -oh. You guys, she lost! What the fuck? Boo. It was correct. It was full on correct. I mean, I'm happy for Charlotte. She killed it. She worked hard. And, like, someone's got to be Asuka eventually. So why not Charlotte? Uh, we're going to go for, this was a crazy one. Rousey and Angle versus Triple H and Steph McMahon. <laughs> We were all waiting, eager with anticipation, because you always wonder how much Steph is there going to be in a Steph match, you know? Like, <laughs> she's always going to show up, but is she going to show out, or is she just going to, like, preen and stand there? Is she just, like, a glorified Lana situation? Like, oh. We had the full Stephanie McMahon package. Like, we had the black smoky eyes. She got done at Macy's. We had the high ponytail with that 90s crimp going on. I loved it. <laughs> All of it. I think that she and Rhonda had the same makeup artist because it was just like black eyeliner. You're, you're good. You're good. Go. Just like black eyeliner, then more black eyeliner, and then it needs something. Black eyeliner. Great. <laughs> um, it was Stephanie there. had a little bit of electric palette in there. I don't know. It was mostly just like I'm going to fall into this crazy crater around your eyes. Um, it's a, it's they an option. They both look great. They both look great. Sure. We could say that. What are our feelings on Ronda Rousey's costume? Oh, God. I can't buzz in fast enough. Um, I thought it was excellent. I thought she looked really good. I thought they like the outfit was serious enough, like, because she was in, like, actual, like, exercise clothes. The kilt for the entrance was actually cute. I rescind my kilt rule for Ronda alone. And the oversized Roddy jacket was adorable. I was fully into her. I was fully into her serving face all night. And I was fully into face, her. Face, acting. I was fully into her, like, actually wrestling a good match. And everyone thought she wouldn't. So fuck everyone for underestimating women. Yeah. Did we not think Ronda. she was going to do well? No, people on the internet did not think she was going to do well. Internet? What the fuck is wrong with you? Hey, internet. Have you ever seen Ronda Rousey do a thing? She does all of them great. You She's also probably thought this show was going to be good. Like, <laughs> Ronda Rousey. You're great stupid. In, great in a movie. Great in an interview. Great in an MMA match. Great on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Great on a runway. Like, she does it all well. Not great on Twitter questioning ah. whether Sandy Hook is real or not. <laughs> oh. Are we unpacking this now? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I think, uh, no, no, no. We, we could talk more about the match. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Kurt Angle moving like a cursed wooden doll. <laughs> oh, my God. Kurt, Ang Kurt Angle was the first of many people tonight 
who just made the theme slow, lumbering motion. Like, this could have easily been a three-hour show if everyone moved at a human speed. True. Like, legit, like, when you played Tekken in the old days, you had to, like, fight the training bot. It just would yes, yes, flop exactly. and flop and flop. Exactly. Yeah, it's like half of the WWE is still loading. <laughs> <laughs> But then there was those great like uh, uh, gender parody r- uh, moments where Rou- Rousey was just fucking wailing on wailing Triple H. Wailing on Triple H on his hot, thick body. <laughs> Berica had like a whole awakening during this. She was like Ronda Rousey beating up Triple H, just like defined a new sexuality That's for you. That's my kink. She didn't know she had. <laughs> Did she won? Right. Yes. There were a lot of almost wins, like. People were pinning each other left and right. There were simultaneous pins. And I was just, I was waiting for it to be over eventually. Girl on boy, boy on girl. We knew Ronda Rousey was going to win. So I was just like, it's, you know, pick an ending at that point. Like, we just, just give it to her. Again, this could have been a lot quicker. Like, we know what's happening. Just, you know, speed her up. Speed her up. I thought it was great, actually. (laughs) That was one of the few matches that was paced perfectly, honestly. I'm impatient. (laughs) All right, Sammy and Kevin Owens versus uh, Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. We have to talk about them because Daniel Bryan came out of retirement so he could say yes at us a hundred more times. <laughs> That's the only reason. Just say yes. yes. DJ Axon Report yes. actually improved that chant immensely, though. I didn't know what to do that there were so many straight people in the bar tonight, so I demanded they all say yes instead of yes, and, it, and then they did it. They did it. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. And then Ariel was like, you made it worse. And I was like, I might have. I don't know why you're surprised that straight people took that. They've appropriated it years ago. It's not even ours anymore. It's exclusively white girls at brunch. Should I ever tell you about the time I was on the subway and I heard white girls debating where the phrase yas came from and I heard them decide, oh, it's from Broad City. That's where it's from. Totally. That was where it originated? Are they both still alive? Only the devil knows. Were you tired that day that you just didn't murder them both? At least one. Like, that's worth going to jail for. Just a, just a little hex. Whoever you are out there, Stop not it. from Broad City. Stop it. It's from Seinfeld. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daniel Bryan, this is another one where I, like, you know, I played this two steps ahead in my brain because I'm a thinker. I just, it, my brain in my hat. I tapped it. Um... <laughs> You knew Daniel Bryan was out early, and they were like, he's going to nap. Oh, they're just checking on him. They're just checking on him. Like, he's going to come back and pin someone. Just make it happen. Yeah, they roll out the sleeping bag of, like, you know, the stretcher. The sleeping bag! It's like nap time. <laughs> and I was ready for him to come back well before he did. Because if we like, had to stay awake for this whole shit, then that really makes me mad that he, get to ta- he got to take a little nappy. <laughs> I feel like none of us really have a fondness for Daniel Bryan, and like that match really relied on the, like us caring about him. And I'm, I'm, I we don't. I know nothing yeah. about him. We have no context I for him. I only know from that gross situation on Total Divas where he like locked off the bathroom for his wife, and it like they played it off as a joke. I'm like, I'm not comfortable with this. This isn't funny. You don't abuse your wife for comedy since the honeymooners. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Shane jumped across the ring like he always does. Let's move on. And he Great. almost died again. Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. Another A oh. plus match. Oh, my gosh. And they dressed Nia right for finally. Uh, Nia looked great. Usually they're she like, like, she's a brick badass. house. Let's put a balcony on her. And this time they were just like, you know what? Keep it pared down. I missed something because why is Mickey coming out with Bliss? I haven't obviously watched in a while. <laughs> They're doing like a plot where like Alexa's like manipulating people, but like she's just. Is like Mickey James stepmom now? <laughs> Your oh. stepmom now. Mickey James is auntie. <laughs> she looked. I, Mickey looked great though. I Mickey will say. Mickey looked great. They matched her leather, with Alexa. It's not the best look that I can imagine for a person in general, but for Mickey James, that was an A plus. Like she has been in the bargain basement. Like she's been in Filene's basement for a while. I saw some tights like her bell bottom tights in the fashion district the other day. I almost got them. They weren't. They weren't belly enough. We're glossing over the most important aspect of Mickey James right now, and the fact it's kind of like Britney Spears, and that if you seek Amy, where all her backup dancers are prettier than her. 
No one's talking about Alexa Bliss's outfit. It was <laughs> fucking dire. That Miss Burning Man shit. No, oy vey. Only close to the Miz in terms of sheer horror. Like, tool and a headband. Like, some Coachella girl throwing up in a bathroom. A <laughs> potty. I don't know. I hated it. It was a mess. Mickey was just really just glad to be there. Glad to be somewhere. <laughs> Uh, I it's love nice you, girl. to be asked. Yeah. Yeah, essentially they both were just ragdolls this entire match. I know. Naya forced Mickey into a death drop. <laughs> like, <laughs> That was, I will say, death drop. The, the best, like, power move of the night is Naya, like, starting the match off being like, I'm going to get to you, Alexa, eventually. Your ass will be kicked. But first, you brought a friend, and just for funsies, I'm going to demolish her, too. And at one point, Alexa tried to intervene, and Nia just gave her a look like, I'm sorry. I am busy kicking her ass. I am ass. busy. You are canceled. You are canceled. And, like, the look was enough. She was like, D would you like to really try and stop me? And Alexa was like, mm. And from then on, we we're like, well, if she can't even intervene here, like, she's going the fuck down. <laughs> Um, we mentioned it briefly, but I do want to say that Naya's outfit is such an improvement. And so she's good. showing more skin. They took the epaulets off of her hips and put them Boobies. on their shoulders where they belong. Yes. There was some weird gold fringe coming off the side. I was going to say, there was weird like things hanging down. And I was like, she didn't need it. I was like, is that where they tore she off an epaulet right before <laughs> she came out? <laughs> either needed more of it or none of it. Yeah, yeah. Or if it was only on one side, maybe. So it's a little sassier. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, Naya won. Sassy. Naya yeah. won. Naya fucking won. You guys, she won so hard. She was sobbing after she won, which is great because it was a like a broken friendship moment where she's like, "Oh, I had to demolish my friend who's not my friend anymore." And B because she's an achievement and she was so happy for herself as we were all for her. It's revolutionary now because the first time where WWE has a heavy set woman that's not a villain. In history, oh. they've never had anyone. <laughs> Women that are heavy I can't be that. nice. That is progress. Don't go on Reddit and look at their opinions about Naya. Just oh, skip it. So, uh, you know, if you see that Reddit thread that's like Naya, Alexa, post-match, just skip it. Do yourself a mental health favor and uh, just pass that right on by. And if you're on Reddit, why the fuck are you like this? Like baiting women's bodies. Like that's any of your business. Talk about my body. Look at it. <laughs> oh yeah. You're like honey boo boo all grown up. Snap into it. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that. AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura, which we've seen before. Um, but they Yeah, did but it again. not with a whole orchestra entrance. If by orchestra you mean high school band. Oh. <laughs> I love Ford. It. They had Lita Ford too. Oh, Lita Ford was there. <laughs> um, I mean, she was great. I did like uh, Guitar Lady. Uh, the rest of it, like, eh. And like, I don't know. What was the fabric that Nakamura's outfit was made of? I think it was like some sort of allure. It was, uh, it was ripped out of space. I could not for the life of me figure it out. The I believe it's the Victoria's Secret velour pants. They just took like juicy off the ass. <laughs> it's not a very juicy one. It's pretty flat. It's the front is really where all the magic happens. Sasha Velour welcomes to the next nightgowns. Shinsuke Velour. <laughs> Brooklyn would like it. It's funny because we were waiting over and over again. Uh, there, there were so many big entrances. And so with AJ's entrance, we were like, what could it possibly be? And the answer is just Nothing. AJ. Other than the driest blowout of the night. Uh, there was nothing to recommend him. Oh, do we want to talk? One surf spray, girl. Not one surf spray. We want to talk about the the info we got about wetted hair online the other day. Oh Ariel is about to provide you all a fact that will make you really regret being alive. Gagging, um, literally gagging. I am tired and caffeinated and drunk, so I might get the details here wrong. But at CSW underscore wrestling on Twitter sent me a message to let me know that the reason that the hair is wetted in wrestling is because it is a choking hazard. And I guess dry hair will get caught in your throat, whereas that silky wet hair you can just, like, pull right out. So, um... It just goes... <laughs> so, um... It's that scene from The Ring! <laughs> oh, my God. 
It's so a if you're from my bathtub. <laughs> yeah. If you're all gagging at home, then um, A, work on that gag reflex. I don't have one. And B, it's because your hair is too dry. You love AJ. Here's the thing. Let me explain this. You guys weren't there. There was a time when he wasn't, okay, maybe he was always like that, but still. He had short hair, he was cute, and I was young and naive, and I just have good memories, okay? Your heart belongs to him. He's your uh, first love, or an early love. He owns my whole. <laughs> <laughs> the gay community. <laughs> Other than that, this match happened. I, again, do not recall it at all. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to say about it to, right. to jog my memory? It was like supposed to be like the one of the most exciting matches of the night, and then they did both of the things that they always do, and I couldn't have cared less. Half of the audience right. here was on their phones, yeah, yeah. <laughs> including me. Appropriate. I was on Instagram. Wait, who won? AJ. AJ. Oh, and then and then Nakamura turned heel, and we totally forgot because oh, it yeah. was like 90 hours long. Oh yeah, the the thing. He hit him with a low blow. Yeah, he oh, got Oh, that's right. There was fisting, fisting, everyone. Sponsored by Crisco. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the <gasps> fisting was the best part of the night. It always is. We have to briefly touch on. I we're not going to talk the about tag this whole team, match. The tag team match. Yeah, I, we can't talk about all of it. Shout but out to Nicholas. Yes, uh, Braun went into the audience and got what must be the dyingest child in the country. <laughs> Here's the thing. WWE rule, the closer you are to the ring, the closer you are to death. The front row is always just in the blast zone. Those kids are about to go out. Nicholas, already dead. He made it into the ring and touched a wrestler. Oh my god. That's it. I think it's literally just the WWE's version of the BFD. Like WWE beats BFD. That's one with the giant, right? BFG. That's what it is. Yep. The big fucking giant. Big fat, no. BFD's big fat dick. Never mind, that's different. Big, that's different. Nicholas does not oh, get Mario one of those. Diaz no. party. No, 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 no. I appreciated that Braun Strowman is a giant cuddly Totoro who's protecting my inner child, which is filled with fear. And uh, I was going through a little bit of a psychological Where journey. Where did you go? <laughs> I just we were called. also at the same time eating a pint of ice cream together. <laughs> it's true. We had had several emotional journeys by that point in the night. <laughs> All right, uh, that's enough. Oh, and also Nicholas is a title holder now. So um, oh, yeah. bury him with that belt. <laughs> <laughs> but give Twitter, give him a blue check mark first. Oh, my God. Anyway. We're not even going to go into detail about it, but uh, The Undertaker was there. He was sad and old and maybe had extensions. Uh, <laughs> There was purple lightning, <laughs> majesty. Um, yep. You know. Uh, He's still walking home. Uh, he won against John Cena, and I don't know what was accomplished. John Cena ran out <laughs> of the ring in the mid, like right after Oscar and Charlotte, like he had to poop. Uh, <laughs> and then he lost a match to an old man. I oh missing the God. silver lining of that whole match. There was no Kid Rock at all. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> You're so right. So you're right. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we? D are that, that's it. We uh, we're skipping New Day. We're skipping the Brudgeon Brother. Brudgeon Brothers. The, the, the Brudge <laughs> Brothers. Yeah. Um, the final match was Blarg versus <laughs> Reigns. <laughs> All right. So Blarg, like. Blarg Blargler. Uh, anyway, so we're not reviewing the last match, but we did recently learn from the internet that Brock Lesnar, IRL, not the character. Uh, hates gay people, so uh, fuck him. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take turns putting on our reading glasses and reading Brock Lesnar for filth. Fuck him, so let's go. Here we go. Brock Lesnar looks like a man made of Duplo blocks made of spam. <laughs> Brock Lesnar looks like he lactates mayonnaise or easy cheese. Have you guys noticed how Brock Lesnar only has like seven moves? And I'm convinced he remembers them by just naming off the Jimmy John's menu like Vito, Turkey Tom, <laughs> <laughs> Avocado Spread. Beach oh, Beach Club. Brock Lesnar is my least favorite summon from Final Fantasy VIII. Brock Lesnar took a 23andMe DNA test and failed. <laughs> Brock Lesnar's neck looks like a pack of Oscar Mayer wieners. Brock Lesnar looks like a zit that's about to pop, but it's mayo instead of pus. 
<laughs> Brock Lesnar's What Would Happen If Masculinity Were Literally Toxic. <laughs> Brock Lesnar looks like when you leave uh, a, sti a, like a log of cheddar out for too long. Do you know that picture that went around on the internet of like, uh, it's like a sign in a subway that says no Ouija boards or seances? Brock Lesnar is the reason why they have that sign. <laughs> because some children summoned him during a dark sandwich ritual. Also everyone, stop being ignorant. His name is Brock Lesnar. The man who made him is Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Just a statement. Can we hold him down and let me titty fuck him? <laughs> He's slimy enough. Brock Lesnar is what would happen if there was a The Fly style teleporter accident between John Cena and Donald Trump. <laughs> Brock Lesnar is what happens when a cloud of foul odors gets ambitious. <laughs> Brock Lesnar is the Harry and the Henderson sequel that nobody asked for. Brock Lesnar hates gay people in a fantasy where a gay person would ever even consider being close to him. I just said I'd titty fuck him. Brock Lesnar looks like Paul Heyman's voice sounds. What does that sound like, Ariel? What does it sound like? I'm not doing it, no. There's a... Hey, can one of our fans edit that noise over the lady in the radio or scene from a racer head? I just want to see what it would look like. Um, I have one more. Uh, sometimes I like to watch nature documentaries about large beasts in the wild. Brock Lesnar is a misshapen bigot. <laughs> oh, I think we can end there, yes. Brock Lesnar, go fuck yourself. Gay people hate you too. Makes me want a hot dog real bad. You guys, I think that was WrestleMania. Yeah. That was a, we, did we did it! Oh my God, it's 1 a.m. It's always 1 a.m. Everyone's always surprised that we have merch. Every time it's linked in the bottom of the video. Please, we have t-shirts, we have uh, iPhone cases, we have tote bags. Dragqueenmerch.com. It's all in Search the, the links nobodies. below. We also just got an Instagram that for some reason I'm in charge of, even though I don't have an Instagram. Uh, it's at, at the Nobody's, it's at the Nobody's NYC. Am I saying that right? Yeah. At the Nobody's NYC. Also, James Mansfield is a bunch of stuff to plug. James, what would you like to tell us about? Oh, actually, I will have a show in Provincetown this summer. Yes. Woo! Called Jerry Kirsty. Guys, thank you all so much. If you are rich gays, come down and see it. And also, I'm also on YouTube as James Mansfield everywhere. Just look me up. You'll be happy you did. Uh, well, we also do a weekly Drag Race viewing party every Thursday at another bar that we're not going to say aloud right we now. We can say here because we're also, recording. Also, we are going to be at DragCon in L.A. <gasps> Come say uh, hi to we're us! We're going to be at the Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab booth, and we're going to be uh, selling perfumes and looking cute. Also have some shows out there, so look out for that. Um, ooh, there's got to be something we're forgetting. Oh, the Patreon. I'm doing so good at remembering all these. <laughs> good job. Oh, yeah. We just came up with a bunch of new reward levels for our Patreon. So please go see what else you could get from us, because some of it's really cool. Exclusive patches, exclusive t-shirts. Uh, if you pay us enough, we'll put you in drag. And also, we're trying to make another new TV show. And also, uh, we're dying and need money. <laughs> all correct. All right, is that everything? <laughs> I think so. I'm fainting. If I'm not dead, then I'm at Ariel Italic at all the places. I'm at your summer home in Provincetown. <laughs> I'm going back to Halloween Town. Good night, everyone. Good night! Bye! Thank you, Bizarre Bushwick! <laughs>